<clears throat> Good morning! I hope everyone is having a wonderful morning. Uh, it is finally bright and sunny here. It's still frigid. It's in the 20s. But for at least a day, we're going to get a little sun. It's really low, though. It. Uh, I went out <clears throat> and kind of stood on the patio for a second. And it reminded me of, like, the evening light you get at a sunset. So it was kind of awesome. <laughs> It's kind of weird. <laughs> I think it's because it's reflecting off of the snow in such a way that it makes it feel uh, like evening. But I wanted to share with you guys some ways, a one way in particular that helps me stay positive. A long time ago when I first started this vlog, um, <clears throat> which I, when I say a long time ago, it was only five months ago. Um, someone, re there were several people who asked me how I stay positive when I'm going through the this big life-changing event. And I never could have imagined how much this loss and this event has affected my life. Like every day it affects me. So I haven't, I, I talked a little bit about meditation and how that's helping me. Um, I've talked about exercise which I, I've been a little slacking on lately. Um, but the one thing that I started doing when things started to get really, really, <clears throat> really difficult, actually, when Sarah started to really go downhill with that really big seizure was I started journaling consistently. And so <clears throat> these are like, the variety of the my journals that I have I've written I filled I filled um so this was the first one that I filled and this is I, I started out with it being um just a brain dump at night because I couldn't sleep my thoughts were racing uh and I needed to get my thoughts out of my head so that I could rest because I am a, I'll think and think and think and replay and replay and replay. And one thing that helped me was to basically do a brain dump before bed. And so that's what I did. And I, I brain dumped, um, and it really helped me sleep and turn my brain off until the next morning. So this one, I started, when did I start this one? I started May 11th, May 11th. And then my last entry for this one was the end of August, August 23rd. So I filled it up pretty quickly. And then I moved to my second one, which I am, I've now moved to a third journal. Uh, this one, I am going back and re putting some things in. I've got room in the back that I didn't do a lot. I, I slacked off in December. And so I'm going back and looking at pictures and, and kind of like, this is my, these are like my two for this year. Um, but so, okay. So I started out with it just being a brain dump and then, and it, and it really did help me sleep and process. I was able to kind of under like by writing it down and 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 putting it on video as well to kind of make connections that I wasn't making necessarily or uh, to help me process through everything that was going on. And um, so then it quickly turned to um, with Sarah having very limited time, like we were down to maybe two weeks with her. Uh, I started basically taking pictures and recording everything I possibly could uh, to remember every moment I had with her. And uh, that also turned into, uh, so not just memories of her, but but also with my family, because when you go through something like this, oftentimes, and, and for me, and for a lot of people, you uh, start uh, really cherishing every moment you have, because you it's a reality check that any of us could be gone at any moment. So uh, I started uh, adding pictures, 
my husband has this really cute little uh this printer that uh it's just like a heat uh, the paper it's like sticky uh sticky sticker uh paper and um it's it makes the print by using heat and so it's just this black and white paper but it connects to your phone and uh i can print off a picture uh and um uh, tear it off and stick it in the journal and then I'll and then write about write about it so uh, it's a fast way to add visual memories and it was very helpful um, for recalling the events as well so I started adding pictures and it wasn't just brain dumps anymore it was like full-on like I want to go back and remember these memories. So there, are, there's brain dump pages and then there's like full on, it evolved into adding stickers and washi tape and making it something that I wanted to go back and read. Whereas like the brain dump stuff is kind of like, I mean, I, I don't need to go back and read it. Um, I, I do from time to time just to see how far I've come as far as my mental health goes. But um so yeah, so that's that. And then the other thing I started doing, the third kind of entry is um, I'll do a page of today I am grateful for. And it started out with struggling to find things to be grateful for. And now through writing and meditation, the more I meditate, the more I uh, and take time to myself to just pause and breathe and look around me, I could write pages and pages of everything that I'm thankful for. It is so wonderful to sit back and be so, even in the midst of chaos and maybe and something stressful happening, to sit back and go, to see the bigger picture, right? And, and to realize this is a moment in time, I will get through it we can get something positive out of this and and being able to flip it so those are kind of the three entries um that i do in my journals um i like i said i need to go back and uh fill in some december stuff i'm going back and looking at pictures to fill out the rest of this um for a little while when I, when I'm doing like a counseling session or I'm really, really, really worried about something and I don't really want it in here, I have a worry journal that this is kind of like when I need to like process a thought or, or I'm really upset about something, I'll put it in this one. I just had this sense of like needing to keep it separate from the other stuff. I don't know. It's just, this is my go-to, like when I'm really upset or I'm really nervous or or I really am having a hard time or I uh, things that I want to talk to my counselor about I'll write down in here or things that we've talked about and processed together I'll write in this one and then um I started this one <laughs> um this one specifically is um looking at pictures of Sarah and I and it's kind of a Sarah and I memory journal so I'll go and I'll look at a picture I had started doing it, trying to do it chronologically from like when we were born, but now I'm kind of, I'm going to start doing it more of like when I see a picture and a memory pops up, I'll just write it down. So it's just kind of a, it's, it's wonderful, happy memories of pictures that I found and the memories that come up, um, that I have combined to be a, a journal and then, um, the lot I haven't done a lot because um I let's see the last entry in here was actually what I wrote and said at her celebration and I kind of since then have been going through a lot of processing a lot of counseling I was having all those panic attacks and so I wasn't in a place to look back and be recalling so much without being triggered. So I took a break from it, but I'm feeling like I'm getting ready to kind of start writing stories again. Um, that hopefully I will, I'll share some of the fun stuff with you guys as I write it. Um, and then the last one 
that I have that I've written maybe a couple things. I like short, I like children's books, right? And so uh, this one is is dedicated to Sarah. I'll show you this one, this one page. It says, tell a story with me. And it's dedicated to Sarah. And Sarah loved to tell stories. So I'm just kind of like, sometimes I get a picture in my head um, or a story in my head and I don't, I, I want to write it, but it helps to, like I'm finding it helps to have a picture or a painting or something to, to put a story to. And with the creation of AI and uh, my husband has some more insight into it because he also he uses it kind of for his his job and he's staying on top of the technology um i've been able to kind of use some of the image generating stuff to um create pictures that were in my head i gave it i give it the description of what was in my head and it creates a picture and then I'm able to kind of write a story. And so this first story that I wrote, uh, I started a second one, but I didn't get very, I got like a plot down. But this first story that I wrote was very much about um, grief. And I don't know if I even named it, but it's basically about two little friend hedgehogs. And well, it's about three little friend hedgehogs. And yeah, I didn't name it. Uh, one of them's name is Ginger and she's very sad because she just lost her best friend. Like he, he died. And um, the other friend um, is, let's see, what did I name him? Button. Sorry, that took me a second to find. Uh, her other friend's name is Button, and the friend that she, their friend that they lost, his name is Leo. <clears throat> and so <clears throat> this is a story about Button helping Ginger to see that Leo's not really gone. He's all around you as long as you keep him in your heart. And they go on like this little picnic, and they, um, and he helps her see that. Um, so it was very much reflective of what I was going through at the time. And then there's this other <clears throat> story that I, I, I haven't, I've got so many like variations that I want to go to on this story that, um, but it's basically about like, it was a Halloween time I thought of this. It's about a young witch. I think her name is going to be Sage. And uh, she is, um, <clears throat> the thought was that, as like a rite of passage on Halloween night, she's in charge of keeping all the jack-o'-lanterns lit in the little town, right? This is like her like job. She has to light them with magic um, on Halloween night and keep them all burning all night long to help protect the children or keep watch over the children. And and so that's kind of where the idea was and that and that maybe she had a hard time either lighting them and she found this one jack-o'-lantern that like talks her in like talks her into positivity and helps her learn how to light the lanterns or or maybe she finds this jack lantern on the hill and she doesn't the other idea was like he was facing the wrong way he doesn't realize that he's part of a bigger picture and she turns him around and he sees that he's part of this you know so i i started to write it i had like those ideas but i just haven't quite figured out what direction i want to to bring it to so that is a journal of me kind of channeling my creativity and sarah's creativity and her love and it's dedicated to her um and then um this is the one i just started for the new year so uh which is i decided to uh, it's gonna continue to be mind dump pages and grateful pages and then like today was 22 degrees you know stuff that I want to remember like today I'll write about um Harrison getting his braces he's getting braces right now Jared took the four-wheel drive luckily it is like only a few blocks away and uh <clears throat> managed to slip and slide to the orthodontist office so if you guys have any suggestions on how to keep a teenager 
with a sore teeth happy, <laughs> drop it in the comments because he uh, he's not going to be a happy camper for the next couple days. So uh, I've decided we will not eat anything in front of him that he can't have. We're going to eat kind of like soft, similar things to him so he doesn't feel um, left out. So. Well, I hope that this is helpful for you guys. Pick up, if you know you're having a hard time processing something, give it a try. It, like for me, it does really help. It's not, I understand it's not for everyone. But, um, and if you have a hard time writing, try looking at a picture and writing. Like that is what really helps me. That's when I really started taking off with the writing. Um, because then I could like, I had a visual um, in my brain to be able to sit there and like analyze the picture and describe everything in it. And, and, and kind of, it helped me replay what happened in my head. Right. Um, yeah, I, um, I do it every night before bed. If I know one tip though, if I know it's something that I am, it's going to bring up emotion, I will do it earlier because then then I don't sit there processing it, that it does the opposite for me. So I have to kind of, sometimes I will, if it's a, it's a sad memory of Sarah or it's something that's going to make me really upset and cry because I have to process the emotion, I will do it earlier in the day so that it's not keeping me up uh, and puts me in a funk uh, the next morning. So just something to consider. Uh, and I hope that's helpful for someone. And uh, stay warm and toasty on this cold winter day. And I will check in with you soon. Bye.